Hey folks, uh, this one is uh, normal distributions or finding the z-scores and stuff. So find the values with uh, normal distributions here. So uh, uh, you'll need your textbook in this lesson, or at least you'll need your table, uh, your standard normal distribution table, so with all the z-scores and stuff on there. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. So um, find the z-score that corresponds to the given information. So it has a cumulative area of 0.3632. So you're going to have to open it up to your standard normal table uh, distribution, which is in my book as table 4. I think it was table A in my last uh, stats book that I taught. But you look in that body of all those decimals and you find the z-score that is closest to 0 0.3632. And um, so so here I found it, um, uh, if you go down to the z-score of negative 0.35, we get uh, 0.3632 right there. So our z-score is... Um, uh, negative 0.35 okay all right so always draw the figure right there so um, here's it remember right here is 50 percent so this would be 0 0.50 so 0.3632 is less than that so it would be a line that's uh, to the left of the zero right there okay so our z score is negative 0.35 right there Okay, all right, always draw that. The, the AP testers will always want this. Okay, so here's the next one, and I forgot to take that out, but that's okay. It's just leading up. has a 10.75 of the distribution to the right, okay? So the area to the right is uh, uh, 0.1075. That means the area to the left is, is 1 minus that. So if we do 1 minus that, we get 0.8925. So that's the number we look up for our, our Z score, our Z over here. Um, we're looking for the 0.8925, and that gives us a Z score of about 1.24 right there. Here it is, 0.8925 right there. Okay, so our Z score is 1.24 that gives us that value. Okay, all right, so... If X represents, and this is just some notations that we got to cover, if X represents the 83rd percentile, we represent that as P sub 83, okay? And that just means that 83% of the data is below X and the other rest of the 100%, which is 17%, is above X, okay? So let's find the Z-score that corresponds with P sub 5, which is, that means 5% uh, or 0 0.05. So we look in the body of the table. So 0 0.05 is way over here. It's going to be a, a Z equals a negative some small number right there. Remember, right here is 50% right here. So 0 0.05 is over here, which represents 5%. Always draw that figure right there, okay? And then look in the standard normal table. 0 0.05 is not shown, but... I can get really close. Right in the middle is uh, at z equals negative 1.65, I get an area of 0 0.0495. Okay, and at z equals 0 0.0505 is negative uh, 0.1.64. Okay, so since it's right in the middle of these, then a number that's right in the middle of these is we average these guys. So add them up and divide by 2, and that'll get us negative um, uh, 1.645 is our z score that gets us P sub 5, which is um, the fifth percentile, okay? So we just had to average those because it's right in the middle, okay? Okay, P sub 50, all right? So that would be that area right there. So a Z-score that represents 50% of the data is Z equals 0 because 50% is below and 50% is above. Okay, 90. Okay, well, 90 is right there, okay? So when we look up 90, well, there isn't one that's exactly 90. We get one that's about 0.8997 at Z equals 1.28. And I'm looking on my table here, 1.28, and I see at 1.29 is 0.9015. So it's not in the middle, you guys. So it might be like Z equals 1.281, maybe 1.28. One five, I don't know. Our our graphing calculators will give us the exact value. So, anyways, our z right there is going to be about 1.28 right there. All right. So recall our z score formula is found by doing um, uh, the x minus the mu divided by the standard deviation. All right. So um, by multiplying both sides by the standard deviation. Uh, we multiply both sides by this uh, sigma formula. I've been saying R in my in my class. We get ZR equals the numerator. And then if we add the, the mean to both sides, uh, we get ZR plus uh, the mean equals our X value. So we're going to use that formula to 
uh, transform a z-score to an x value with a given population, okay? All right, so let's go ahead. So here's our formula. x equals z times the standard deviation plus the mean right there, okay? All right, so a vet records the weights of cats. The weights are normally distributed with a mean. Whoops, I forgot to put a space in there. With a mean, there's supposed to be a space right there of 9 pounds and a standard deviation of 2 pounds. Find the weight uh, X that corresponds to each Z score. Okay, so here we go. So uh, here's Z is 1.96. Here's negative um, uh, 0.44 and then Z equals 0. Okay, so that's going to give us, here's our formula. So we're looking for X. Okay, so we're going to plug in our mean of 9, our standard deviation, I'm sorry, Z scores, which are these numbers right here, and then times the standard deviation of 2 pounds. So there's that right there. Did that on all of them right there. Okay, and and then we just crank it all out and then we're going to interpret these results okay so what does this mean well if the mean is nine pounds this one is over the mean this one is under the mean this one's exactly the mean so something like that okay so you're always going to interpret that okay that's the interpretation all right here's another one here so scores for the california peace officer standards and training training there should be an i sorry my students didn't catch that no, i didn't either training let me throw the i in there Sorry. Uh, tests are normally distributed with a mean of uh, uh, 50 and a standard deviation of 10. Okay, an agency will only hire applicants with scores in the top 10%. Okay, the top 10% is going to be shaded to the right. So we want um, the Z score for it shaded to the left. Okay, all right. So uh, always show the curve. So here's the top 10% right there. So we look up in our table of uh, our standard normal table and we look up for the 0.90. Okay, now we already did that. We just did that and we got 1.28 and a little bit more, 1.28 and some change right there. Okay, so uh, our test scores in the top 10% above is, uh, is the, above the 90th percentile. So from the last section, we found out 0.90 was 0.8997, what gave us a z-score of 1.28. So there's our z-score. All right, so now we know that the, uh, the mean is 50 and the standard deviation is 10, and we go ahead and just plug it into our formula, and we get about 62.8. What does that mean? Well, that means that the lowest score an applicant can earn and still be eligible to be hired for the agency to be in the top 10% is a little bit more than 62.8, so 63 or above right there, okay? All right, so in a randomly selected sample of women ages 20 to 34, here's the mean total cholesterol. i got a noisy class behind me. That's what you're hearing. I'm on my prep period, so... Total cholesterol is 181 milligrams per deciliter with a standard deviation of 37.6. Okay, so assuming the total cholesterol levels are normally distributed, find the highest cholesterol levels a woman in this group can have and still be in the bottom 1%. Okay, so here's our curve, the bottom 1%. So we look up 0 0.01 and we find a z-score of negative 2.33 because the bottom 1% is this way. Okay, and the graph always gives us the numbers to the left right there, okay? So we find the z-score that corresponds with that, and that gives us the negative 2.33. The closest one is uh, 0 0.099, okay? And that gives us a z-score of point, negative 2.33. 0 0.099 is closest to 0 0.01, okay? So now we just plug it into the formula with those numbers right there, and so when we do that, we get that, okay? What does that mean? That the value separates the lowest 1% of the total cholesterol levels from the women in this age group to the highest is about 93 milligrams per, per deciliter. All right, if you're in our class, we're going to assign you that. Take care.